It's 6.02, and as you click this button, I'll call the meeting to order. Okay, welcome everybody. This is the November 30th special meeting of the EDC to talk about our tourism project. Um, the agenda is pretty straightforward. Um, we'll ask for additions or deletions to the agenda. We will ask for citizen comments. I'm going to propose that the citizen comments um, uh, come after point item 4C because I think that most of the comments will be informed by the results of the survey. So my suggestion is that we give a quick introduction to the tourism project, that we share the results of the three surveys of the local community first, visitors survey, and the merchant survey, and then we open up the floor to uh, citizen comments. If there's anyone who has a citizen comment that isn't about that, then you could make that at the beginning. And then we will uh, brainstorm about ways to address the concerns that are raised in the various surveys. Um, are there any additions or deletions to the agenda? And actually, I'll ask um, Todd and Michael Green and Patrick, to, if you see people raising their hands remotely, if you could just speak up and let me know, because I, I, I guess I can't see everybody at the moment, but there'll be more people signing on. Uh, John, this is, this is Tom Ayers from the Vermont Standard. I just have one request when we go to the public comment. Um, on behalf of the media and people who might be Zooming in, could we just ask each speaker to identify themselves and speak closer to the microphone? Um, we have a po we have a microphone and a podium tonight. We're going to try a different approach for excellent to make excellent. comments. But but we if, they could if they could just identify themselves at the beginning of the remarks, so we know who is speaking, that would be very helpful. So, okay, thank uh, you. Uh, sorry, Tom. Sorry, I couldn't hear you. What? I was just asking I'm Todd just that if, I'm just kidding. Just when kidding. we go to the public comment, just kidding. Todd, you're kidding. Well, <laughs> I got my mic cranked up, I guess, my friend. You know, Tom, he's he's only teasing you. And I'm just teasing you. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to uh, see you. Todd, I appreciate you. Thank you. <laughs> Hearing no additions or deletions to the agenda. Um, so uh, unless there's any objections, we'll move citizen comments to the, the remaining, or sorry, are there any citizen comments that don't relate to the agenda? All right, hearing none, we will move on. So the document, the slides that you're seeing here are on the EDC website if you're remote and for some reason can't see them or if you wanna go back and um, have trouble sleeping tonight, you'll have something to put you to sleep. <laughs> I'm gonna start with, the uh, introduction to the tourism initiative, sorry. So there have been ongoing concerns about the impact of tourism on Woodstock. Um, they've been raised, I think primarily, I don't know that there are other forms in which they've been raised, perhaps there are, but they've certainly been raised in EDC meetings um, from time to time over at least the last 18 months. Um, I'd say in, uh, this is uh, November, Probably in May or June, um, there, there was more press coverage globally of the issue. Susie Stoltz, among others, was sort of shared a lot of information in other cities and towns. And the discussion kind of got more serious. And the EDC at some point this year, I don't, some of you may remember exactly when, EDC said, OK, we need to figure out whether or not this is an issue that we have to deal with. Um, I think there were two hypotheses at that point in time. And these are the extreme versions of them. I'm not saying that anyone held these views at either end of the spectrum, but at one end of the spectrum was there's only a handful of people who, you know, who are concerned about this. Uh, and at the other end of the spectrum, and again, I don't know that there was any one person that felt that extreme. And at the same token, at the other end of the extreme, um, that this was sort of the end of Woodstock and we needed to eliminate all tourists. And again, I don't think anyone said either of those two things. Um, I think the results will show that neither of those extremes is correct, that that where we are is somewhere in the middle. Um, and I think all, certainly at least two, and if not all three of the surveys, I think suggest that. But really the purpose today is to decide, should we devote resources to address the concerns? 
And I think the answer is we should. And uh, and if so, let's start to think about what we should do about it. We're not going to, as I mentioned in the listserv, oh, 11 times, we're not going to make any decisions tonight. There are no funding decisions. There are no funding proposals put forward tonight. We're just going to share the information about the surveys, allow for people to comment, and then hopefully spend half of the time brainstorming so that we can start to generate a long list of ideas that the EDC can then filter down and start to study uh, and, and decide over the next months whether they can be implemented, how much funding they require, and so forth. So if, and the question that we're trying to answer, and I'm going to emphasize this with a chart that I'm going to pull up when we get, when we forget it, because occasionally we will. I'm going to pull up the question, and like in really big fonts, so we remember. This is the question we're trying to answer. Should we devote resources to address the concerns? You know, there should we, instead of just doing surveys, should we start to problem solve, think about setting aside money, develop proposals to fund a parking solution or a new restaurant or more bathrooms or pick your concern, whatever they are. We're not trying to answer the question exactly how dissatisfied are the people or what is the exact percentage of merchants who think the marketing is good or bad, right? Those are good questions, but we haven't done enough work to pinpoint those. What we need to decide tonight is, should we move forward with a project or that looks at the, the most, the low hanging fruit um, or not. And so just try to sort of remember that. And if the answer is yes, then we'll start to brainstorm tonight. We'll prioritize the ideas, we'll analyze them, we'll reprioritize them, we'll develop proposals, all of that in, you know, in public meetings. We'll develop proposals to allocate funding to them and we'll trade that funding off against our other priorities, which is increasing housing supply, marketing Woodstock, increasing childcare capacity, uh, rejuvenating the downtown area, supporting local events uh, for, for residents and visitors. And, you know, it's a zero sum game. If we spend more money on this, we spend less money on that or vice versa. So tonight is the beginning of that process. Not, we're not at the end, we're at the beginning. Okay. So for tonight's discussion, keep in mind, we need to get to the brainstorming. We're going to finish by 8 p.m. Uh, <laughs> Remember he said that. Right. Every anytime I any time I announce the ending of the meeting, we don't make it. So I've now doomed us to mm -hmm. run late. Um, so what we'll try to do is do the first part in the first hour, maybe, and in the second part, the brainstorming in the second hour. And I'll try to be as fast as I can in terms of the presentations. When we comes time for public comments, we have three. We have a process innovation. In addition to the two other innovations, we have three innovations: pizza. A podium for remote participants and pizza. Um, and wine. Oh, and wine, actually wine. There, yes, that was the chamber brought the wine. Thank you. I think. Thank you. Um, <laughs> the chamber knows how to get business done. Right. Exactly. Well, what we're going to ask, we're going to ask that the remote participants can see who's speaking and so forth. If you want to make a comment, we're just going to ask you to line up at the podium and we'll either call on podium people or alternate with the remote if we need to. And in that way, they'll be able to see you. There's a camera that's pointed at the podium, and there's a microphone there as well. And please, John, as Tom asked, to announce your name when you talk. Yeah, okay. John, John, just as a humorous note, I, I, I appreciate the alliteration of pizza, podium, and participation. Yes. Oh, I, I, <laughs> Gotta love it. <laughs> yeah, that took me a day or two. Um, <laughs> that's that. Okay. And one. So, any questions or concerns so far? All right. So, let's start then with a summary of the local community survey. Now, we had 375 people respond to the survey. That is either two or three times the number of people that go to town meeting, which is both good and bad news, it seems to me. Um, so uh, thank you, all of you, if you responded. I assume many of you did. And thanks to everybody who's online and who's not listening um, for responding. I think it's, I think, you know, I, I don't know whether the sample is representative because I know that there are some people who have strong emotions on one side of the issue or the other or the third side of the issue. But having 370 people respond to a survey like this is really, really valuable. And I think it just is um, we're lucky that we have a community that will do that. Um, I'd ask that you hold your questions except for questions of interpretation, because you're going to get a chance to make your points during community 
or during the uh, community uh, the public so, public comments, citizen comments. Thank you. Okay. So the first point is that most people understand that Woodstock benefits from tourism. Now this chart, which I see now on the screen here, is essentially impossible to read. But the blue, it's a hundred. These bars are all a hundred percent, and the blue is that people think that that tourism benefits a great deal. And the first call, and and the orange is benefits somewhat, and the gray is at the top is benefits very little. So ninety-eight percent of the people think that tourism helps local stores and restaurants to thrive. Seventy-five percent, a lot. Twenty-three percent, twenty-five percent, a little, uh, somewhat. Uh, 80% think that that tourism encourages people to consider moving here. 75% uh, think that it increases the number and quality of activities for local residents. 75% uh, think it increases local property values. 50-55% think it creates a more diverse experience. So, you know, 50-50 on some of these. But for the most part, people appreciate that, that tourism does benefit Woodstock, which is important because there's also a lot of concerns. And it's important to understand that most people think understand that this is a two-sided issue. There are benefits and there are concerns. And most of the rest of the time, um, we're gonna be talking about the concerns because that's what we're trying to solve for. So we're not trying to be overly negative. About 40% of the respondents say they regularly experience some of the negative effects of tourism. And the 40% is defining regularly as daily or weekly. And so if you add monthly, it's more like 60%. So daily from the bottom, daily is the blue, weekly is the orange, monthly is the gray. So 40% of the people say they have difficulty getting a reservation at a restaurant daily or weekly. 40% say, 45% say they have difficulty finding a parking spot. 46% uh, say they have difficulty with traffic jams. A little bit less, 35% say they have seen inappropriate behavior. 30, a little less than that, 30% say they have long lines and waiting lines and so forth. It's clear from the survey, by the way, for those of you that are skeptics of the survey, it's clear that some of the respondents, resp as anyone would, maybe I don't remember my responses, maybe I did, um, responded a little bit emotionally. There are some people who say that they have trouble making a reservation at a restaurant daily. That means 365 times they were intending to eat out and had trouble making. There are two people who said that they, observe, this comes later in the survey, public urination daily, right? That I think is unlikely to be happening. But again, remember the question we're trying to answer. We have a problem that's worth pursuing here. This is, I think, I was surprised that this percentage of people were experienced these things as frequently as I say, even discounting the fact that some people are feeling either, you know, are perceiving it maybe mathematically a little bit overstating the problem. And by the way, when I responded to the survey, I can say this emotionally. It's like, I think I understated the problem. Um, I, I'm not, I said I wasn't bothered by anything ever, basically. And that's probably not true. I mean, there are times when, you know, when the peeing really gets. <laughs> but more important than, than the experience, because we wanted to try to get an experience and also, were you bothered? And the percentage of people who are bothered a great deal or bothered somewhat is even higher than the frequency number. So, you know, 30, 25 to 35 percent are bothered a great deal by these problems, and 40, another 40 percent or so are bothered somewhat. So, the, the residents are more concerned. And the last chart on this summary is, I guess, the point that I was making about what it takes to bother someone, um, which I think is important. We all have our own. You know, but what this shows on the lower axis going to the right is more frequent, uh, more frequency. So the first column there on the left, the left three columns there is you experience something rarely or only on peak days. And then the middle column is monthly and the right hand column is weekly or daily. Now, if you experience something weekly or daily, you would expect someone to be bothered a great deal. And that's the upper right hand corner. The vertical axis is how bothered are you? But there are people here who are bothered somewhat or even bothered a great deal by experiencing things rarely or on peak days. So it just shows that there are different levels of acceptance. And we just need to understand that in the community. It's not, this is probably true for just about any issue. So that's kind of where I think that's the last, oh, sorry. The last slide is, is the um, open-ended comments. Um, they have not been fully analyzed. There are 900 distinct comments from the 370 people. If you break, because some people say, I think this and that and that. And so 
And I haven't analyzed them fully yet. I've sort of scanned them, read them once, but without classifying them. If anyone is interested in doing that, I will share the results with you. You're more than welcome. But this is sort of a high level of it. Um, the EDC survey asked about those six behaviors. So we have the measures. The, the, the measures you just saw are about those six things, restaurant access, parking, traffic, crowded sidewalks, long lines, and inappropriate behavior. But the other, and there, and people commented on all of those things, but they also commented on some things we didn't ask about. Stores not catering to locals, a diversity from a tourism economy, a pedestrian behavior, which was a major topic of visitors. I think it was targeted at visitors, that pedestrian, hopefully uh, their behavior, not ours. Bike riders, parking behavior, pet behavior, trash overflow. So we're not... You know, we, the survey asked about specific concerns. That doesn't mean those are the only things we can work on if, if the community feels that some of the things on the right-hand side or something else is very important. But the data sort of shows that, you know, that in particular restaurant access, parking access, um, those were the two, if you go back, those were the two things that, that the people were most concerned about. So that's a very quick summary of the, the survey of the local community. The visitor survey, sorry, just one last thing. I just want to mention in terms of access, we publicize the survey on the listserv. We know that not everyone does it. Tom, I don't remember. I think you, I'm pretty sure you mentioned the survey in the standard. Uh, I don't know how to get this on. I've got it up, but I'm not getting any. Um... Yeah, yes. I, <clears throat> yeah, and if you can mute yourself. Uh, oh. Tom Ayers is there. I'm on, I'm on, I don't know how to get the I'm sound. I'm unmuting myself, John. Okay, I did, yeah, I did mention the... Uh, I unmuted it. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm Let trying to find the mute all button. You can. It's fine. Where's the mute all button? Can you all, me, can you all hear me now? Well, yeah, Tom, hold on one second. It's okay. such a good thing I should go back there. out that I didn't know. Like, oh, wow. I didn't know how much soup you Frank, wanted. Fran, whoever... Oh, they can't hear us, I so we can't. Know how John, much, you can mute them. Uh, from many, I know, I can't find the button. Where's like the mute all? Uh, most stuff give me the rush. Control off delete. Control off delete. No, no, no. I went ahead. I love it. Oh, participants. It's in participants. Sorry. That's where it is. Thank you. I don't... I don't mute all. There we go. Yeah, yeah. So, so John, I, I did... Now you've muted everybody, John. No one can hear. I I heard you, Patrick. I you can't hear John. John, you've muted the meeting. We're never going to get out by 8 o'clock. You're sabotaging your meeting. We need justice. You no. got to go to the regular unmute for you, Tom, John. Yeah. John, no one can hear you. Unmute everyone. It's probably your private computer, John, that's muted, that you have to unmute. Oh, boy. We've got to edit this video. I know it's not typically legal, but we should edit this video. <laughs> Thanks. Sorry, Todd. There Thank we you. go. We got him. There's the boss. There you go, Todd. Okay, back Todd, to where spoken it, spoken it. like a true post production editor there, Todd. <laughs> okay, we advertise it in the listserv. We also advertise it in the standard, but we also sent a postcard to every household in Woodstock. We've never done that before. I got a note the other day from someone who said we should have notified the household, and so I, I know that the mail has been having some delivery problems. Maybe not every one of you, actually, just by a show of hands, you. Does anyone, how many of you received a yellow or pink postcard? That's interesting. So like 650%. Yeah. But did you check your garbage cans? Okay. Well, that's interesting. It's good to know that there's really, okay. Anyway, we publicized the survey. Partly, I think that's the reason why we got so many respondents, which is great. But also we made every effort possible to involve people who weren't online or who don't read the standards. So, okay. On to the visitor survey. So this is a survey, by the way, of 120, 117 visitors. It's an unfortunately small number. We didn't have a lot of time. We sent an email blast to a list of people that the chamber has, people who visited the Welcome Center and have shared their email, and the list of people that our marketing platform has been communicating with. 
and we got 120 responses. We did not have an incentive that you would enter a raffle or anything of that sort. We decided we thought we could try again if we got too few responses. This is not a great number of responses, but remember the question we're trying to answer. I think it's enough to decide whether or not we, we have a we have a, a concern about, mm -hmm. about it. Well, sorry, can can you just yeah, come up and say who you are? Sorry. We're just trying this. I, I'm no, it's just stand by the podium. Susie Stolls, and I have a question of the data. Last time, it seemed mostly it came from Beth's list. We don't, we have, it seemed that way, but we haven't done the analysis. We will. Okay, that analysis is important. Yeah, I, I agree. would recommend you let her sit on the end. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> all right. Be over yes. All right. Most people are satisfied with their visit to Woodstock, but there seems to have been a meaningful decline from the visits in prior years. Now, we don't, we did not do the survey in prior years. So how did we come to this conclusion? We asked people to tell us how satisfied they were with their last visit, their most recent visit. And we said, then we asked them, when was that? And so most people that visit was in 2023. I think if there was 117, I think 80 of them were from 2023 and 30 or 40 of them were from before 2023. So again, not, you know, not the best sample. It would be nice if it was larger. If we decide that it's going to change what we would do, we can do more, collect more data. But even with that number, there's enough people in that before 2023 bar to see that that's a pretty big decline. So 81% are either very satisfied or satisfied. Five point scale, very satisfied, satisfied, neither satisfied nor dissatisfied, dissatisfied, very dissatisfied. So 80% are either very satisfied or satisfied, but both categories went down from before 2023. So, you know, not something we should ignore. John, an important part of that too would be uh, are are they first time people in the eighty one percent? Are they repeat? You know that kind of would filter or change, and you get a real perception of whether things decreased or not. So you're really making a stretch doing what you're doing here. We're stretching more than we would like to, but uh, that's a not... big stretch. Yeah. Well, this is what the data shows. So yeah, and and it's exactly it's measuring exactly what we said. Um, similarly, we also, so we asked basically two questions about satisfaction. One was a direct question, how satisfied are you? And the other is probably a better question, which is, would you rec, what would you recommend? You know, would you recommend someone else come to Woodstock? And again, here, it's very high. It's 84% of the visitors this past year said that they would recommend either somewhat likely or very likely to recommend. Um, that was down from 92%. Um, and the biggest, the, 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 the Sorry, no, sorry. There was uh, an increase, basically a shifting of people from I definitely recommend to I uh, very likely to recommend to somewhat likely to recommend. So again, not going in the right direction. I agree that it's an indirect, it's an indirect measure. The time of year that they came doesn't seem to significantly um, affect the results. Although interesting, the visitors during peak holiday times are a bit more positive. This kind of contradicts what we all would think. But again, the data, these are these, I think we should view these bars as essentially essentially equal given our small sample size. But it doesn't make a huge difference that we did the survey in October or that people visited. It doesn't seem to be based on what they said. The f we asked them what appeals to you most about Woodstock and what's the one thing you would change. Um, these are open-ended comments, so they had to be classified. But basically something about the environment, the feel of it, the beauty, was clearly number one, and the people was clearly number two. So, I mean, that's in a good sense. Sorry, I wasn't suggesting it was less important. So I would think that's great. Then shopping, specific events, lodging or dining, those are the things we, oh, no, sorry, these were open-ended comments. So, and then we asked, um, what were what's the one thing that you would change about Woodstock? And interestingly, tied for number one was nothing. So a quarter of the people said, don't change a thing. It's pretty interesting. But then the people who did find problems with it said, um, you know, more places to eat or drink. Fewer crowds, less traffic. Um, and the fewer crowds, 
comment was more than a handful of people noted the irony of them making that comment. But it's understandable why they, you know, but nevertheless, they, they stood by it. So parking, um, make it more affordable. And what you can see down there, um, shops and then a handful of things, you know, um, bring back the Woodstock Pharmacy by more than one person, because obviously repeat mm -hmm. visitors. Right on. I think the most interesting finding, or not the most interesting, but an interesting finding is at the bottom of the list, one person mentioned more public restrooms. One person out of 117. Now, I don't know quite personally what to do with that because I think that merchants, for example, who come to the merchant survey have said, and I think merchants have a, a good, a different pulse on this because they hear comments from people. But the merchants have said that rest, public restrooms, I think might, would come to it, I think might be the number one thing that they recommend we invest in, in terms of an infrastructure. So I think there, I'm a little bit confused about the data. And then we asked about specific aspects of Woodstock. Nearly everyone is satisfied with their experience. This chart goes from 70% to 95% satisfaction. So remember that the lowest is 75, but shopping is at the top with outdoor activities at the top. Uh, sorry, the right hand, the further to the right is participation. So basically everyone shops, 90% of the people shop and 90% of the people are satisfied with their shopping. And 20% of the people attend cultural events and 75% of them are satisfied and then the others are in between. That's how to read that. Okay, I think that's it for the visitor's survey. And then last is the merchant survey. So we asked the merchants the same question. How do you think, how, how satisfied do you think visitors are? I'm oh, sorry, let me just say, this is 25 merchants. Uh, that's not a big sample, but it's the largest gathering of merchants that has been, <laughs> well, it's a small absolute number from a statistical point of view. It's a, it's a bigger percentage. It's probably a bigger percentage of businesses, but maybe not. It's a bigger, probably a bigger percentage of businesses slightly than the percentage of, of community members. And slightly. probably There's downtown, probably a, downtown visitor uh merchants as well not i wouldn't say it's it's more of a downtown collection okay so but anyway from a mathematical point of view it's 25 people basically who are answering the question and so they basically said you know uh we think that 40 percent are very satisfied 40 percent are satisfied 20 percent are neutral and then just to compare it to that other survey um they sort of visitors themselves had a slightly more positive uh perception um than what the merchants thought, but you know, directionally aligned. Now, we we also asked some questions about marketing. This is we've all agreed I, on the EDC that that the topic that we're talking about is tourism, which includes marketing, but isn't limited to marketing. But we asked in the merchant survey marketing questions because that's an issue that's important to the EDC and to the merchants. We asked about first, are you aware of what the EDC's marketing programs are? Sixty-four percent were aware. Um, and another 12 weren't sure. You're asking who? We're asking these 25 merchants. Are you aware of what marketing programs EDC has? And then we asked a second question of the ones who were aware, since that's really the only group we could ask, is uh, of those people, I think there were 16 of those in that 64%, that's 16 people. What was the impact of those marketing programs on your business? And two thirds of them said it increased their business Another 13% said they weren't sure, but 20% said they didn't think it, it helped their business. So most think that it helps. Uh, we asked them, do you recommend increasing, maintaining, or reducing spending? Uh, this won't shock anybody. They recommended, uh, you know, half, half the people said keep it the same, half the people said increase it. A few people said to, a couple people said to reduce it. Um, 33% of a third of the group said they would be willing to contribute to those marketing programs financially. And another 50% said they weren't sure. Um, and so 80% plus are willing to consider it, which I think is interesting. We then asked them, we close out the survey by asking them about their uh, prospects for 2023. And on the left-hand side is the results from the merchant survey. Half said they expect lower revenue in 23 versus 2022. A third said they expected higher, and 20% said they expected 
the same. So about half said they were as good or better than last year, and half said they would be probably somewhat worse than last year. On the right-hand side, oh, hi, Marion. On the right-hand side is the are the EDC revenues. EDC revenues are a reasonable proxy for tourism. Really? Uh, EDC revenues, uh, oh, this, this is the 1% options tax, and that's a tax on lodging, uh, meals, prepared meal, restaurant meals, and alcohol. And so it's reasonable proxy for tourism. So that not all the merchants are focused on tourism, but based on another question we're about to see, many of most of them heavily serve the tourist industry. So the and the EDC is forecasting, we don't have the EDC is forecasting a slight decline from 380,000, which was by far the largest revenue we saw in last year. Uh, to slightly lower than that. We might be 380. I don't think we'll exceed it um, in 2023. So a, a sort of a balanced picture, I guess I would say, although the long-term trend is really quite positive. I mean, it's 54% growth. It's probably six or 7% per year um, growth with a pandemic in the middle of it. So. And then finally, we asked what, the impact of a significant tourism decline would be on their business. Half of them said they would significantly suffer, 17%. So two thirds said they would either significantly suffer or not survive, go out of business. One third said they would not suffer. So that's sort of a proxy, I think, for that two thirds of the businesses are driven by the tourism industry just to a large extent, and one third probably less, so, much less so. And I think that's it. Oh, no, sorry. Then we asked them, yeah, what are the ideas? What what infrastructure would you invest in? And restrooms was number one. More parking is number two. Food options. So with the exception of restrooms, the other two are the are the two major concerns that both visitors and residents had talked about. Doesn't, and then, that, doesn't that conflict with the re restroom one? Yeah. yeah. Doesn't that conflict with? Yeah, it does. One person mentioned it, but yeah. I mean, and by the way, I would have that would have been right at the top of my list just of, of what the problem is. There's today. another question. Only one. One person said we need more visitors. One visitor out of 117 said that was that was something that they thought was a problem. So maybe they're the people that are peeing on the lawns. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a, and then there's there's other you know signage, um, welcome oh, center signs, um, easier payment for parking, things like that. That probably that one person needs to urinate every day. Right. <laughs> and then some additional comments were offered: keep marketing Woodstock, push the slower months, fewer buses, spend more money on marketing. John, if there was more food served, then we didn't. We need more bathrooms. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> All right. Um, okay. So that's a summary of the three surveys. Thank you for asking only a handful of fact-based questions. Um, let's just take citizen comments about either what you've heard or how you think we should move forward. And if we can, we'll. We've got twenty-five minutes at least. I hopefully, if we, if you each person would keep it to two or three minutes, that would be great. We're not going to call on people twice. So if you come up to the podium um, and just line up, I know it's a little odd, but I've seen in other town meetings where this works really well. And the, the reason for doing this, by the way, is so the remote people can see who's talking and hear who's talking. So someone has to go first if you want to stand up and walk up to the podium. And if you are remote, uh, if you go into... Uh, Reactions. Where is it? Um, no one has a reaction right now. Raising their hand, John. Okay. But, uh, folks, you guys can go down to reactions and raise hand, and and John will be able to call on you. We'll help That'd be great. Them. So, yeah. okay, go ahead. Do you want me to? And, and you want me to start taking? Oh, yes. Oh, sorry. And um, no, no, not you. Well, this isn't brainstorming. So I think yeah. If you have brainstorming ideas, hold them, or you can mention them, but then bring them up again during brainstorming, or or maybe. Actually, if you have brainstorming ideas, you can put them up. Yeah, why don't you go ahead? But, but we're doing for, brainstorming ideas. We're not. We're doing them okay. next, but so you don't have to have an idea. Okay, so I have two comments on the. Let's say who you are, and then I'm Susie Stolls. I live in Woodstock. Sure. Uh, it's Stolls, by the way. Um, one is is that I have talked to people who try at certain certain times. See, there's a question with the data. You say try to make reservations. I think people were at, were asking, thinking about things like they couldn't get their daily coffee during peak time. So I think that that was a poorly uh, worded question on your part. The other thing that I think is really super interesting, which is why I asked about who are the visitors, um, you know, stimulated the, the responses. I think that the reason why um, there's so few bathroom issues is that 
if the people came to uh, the visitor center and they talked to Beth, right, they had a high satisfaction and they, Beth told them where the bathroom was. And I think that, so, it's a, so I think that the, uh, visitors who come to the visitor center have a high satisfaction. They get their answers, their questions answered. They get told where they can eat. They get told that there's a bathroom. And so I think that that's an important consideration. Okay, thank you. Are there any other comments? Um, Jeff, to, sorry, just line up behind Jeff. So it's the walk along. Okay. Okay. Uh, Jeffrey Kahn, Woodstock. A couple of things. One, I, I want to comment on the survey, first of all, um, of residents. The vast majority of those responses were either late September or in October. Uh, I wonder if that, that survey had been done in April, if people would have had as much trouble saying restaurants to that extent that they did. I think the timing influenced that survey. I wanted, just wanted to say that. Um, and as far as the merchant survey, I want to make one comment. The vast majority of the businesses were in downtown Woodstock were represented. 25 businesses, that's almost everybody. Um, I think that the when the EDC was created, one of the main purposes of the EDC was to support the business community to the greatest extent possible as their as one of their major missions one of their major missions and i oh. I, I urge the ADC to, to remember that one of well uh, hold on i said one of their major missions i i asked the ADC to remember that as far as suggestions i have two one which i got partly from you john i think it's brilliant we have a real trouble problem on sundays and mondays in woodstock with food service if we had could get four food trucks to be in the mechanic street parking lot on sunday and monday for the four weeks of foliage that would help the problem tremendously and keep congestion off the street and the lines at the at mon uh, to a little bit less mm -hmm. than they currently are um, I think it would it would increase satisfaction of, of locals and then of, of tourists and then locals as well. So that's one suggestion. Um, that's that's food trucks in the McCann Street parking lot. Four of them. And it's a, well, oh, brainstorming. It's okay. If, if if you okay. want, to, you don't have to make a suggestion, but if you do, we'll record it. I don't know what else brainstorming. It, but um, okay, the other one, the other brainstorming idea that has to do with what you're talking about would be the buses. And I think that if we could put the buses, unload them in the East End Park area, as opposed to where they currently do, and maybe even have a food truck there for them, for some of those people who want to just eat and then leave, uh, and the others can walk to the village and go back and then perhaps those those buses that want to unload right in the center of the village, there's a charge for them to do that. And that would require an ordinance change, but that's possible. I think that would help alleviate some of the congestion in, in the village during, I'm just talking about during foliage. Um, so those are two suggestions to consider. Thank you. Let me just check, is there anybody online who would who can figure out how to and would like to raise their hand. No, no hands, John. I'll let you know if there are. Sorry, say that again. No, no hands. hands. No I'll hands. let you know. If, I'll yeah, let you so know if there are any. We're, we're making. We're 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 doing. Let it ride. I don't want to hold back on on suggestions, but we are going to go to brainstorming, where where we will give people a chance to do it too. So. If we're you, scheduled for that at eight. We're scheduled for that at eight o'clock. We get to it sooner. That's but fantastic. But if you just have comments about, no, sorry, at seven. At seven, we're scheduled. But, at but John, John, I think that I think the issue was that you had mentioned in the procedures that folks can only come up to the podium Correct. podium one time. So I think that might be what's throwing them. No, no, you can. That brainstorming resets the counter. With brainstorming, yeah. we're going to start again, and people will can make suggestions. Sorry, I should have been clear about that. For under citizen comments, 
if you have comments, if you make suggestions, we're not going to ignore them, but time, we're going to come to the time for making brainstorming suggestions. And each time we'll go through and everyone can say something once if they want to, and then we can call on people twice. So we're still in the first category of just general comments. Go ahead. You have an say online you. person. Lisa Lawler is online. All right, thank you. Go ahead. Say who you are. Okay. Uh, Charlotte Hollingsworth, and I'm a resident in the village. Um, I've lived here for 20 years, and I found that this past foliage season was the most congested, crowded, and really as a visitor, because we had um, unexpected visitors show up to us. Um, they didn't stay with us, but they stopped by. And one of them wanted to go in the bookstore and you couldn't get in. I mean, it was so crowded. And she looked around because she'd never been here. And she goes, how do you deal with this? All these people. She goes, we can hardly get down the sidewalk. And I just thought as a visitor, if I was a visitor to Woodstock during peak foliage, I would not like it here. And I love Woodstock, but I just thought it was um, very unpleasant uh, surroundings. And not to mention, I we had our own issues with our house and people just walking in. And um, I, I won't go into that. But anyway, I just thought the bus, the tour buses, um, is there any way to get permits for the tour, like only five tour buses a day, something, because um, the, when the people file out, I mean, I only saw one tour bus driver who gave um, duck lunches, or uh, if they were actually from um, Subway, and they had little box lunches. He says, you have one hour. They went over to the park. They dropped them by the mm -hmm. Woodstock Inn, and then they had to come back. One hour, I mean, how could they get anything to eat? anyway so but i think there's way too many tour buses in the in the village okay and all right thank you charlotte roger hold on one second lisa you're next go ahead lisa lawler can you say your yeah hi i just had to unmute hi i'm lisa lawler i live in the village but i also am here uh from danforth pewter i work two days a week um i have to say that um I'm going to say a couple things. The reality is we have some tourists that are difficult, but quite frankly, we have some Woodstock residents who are quite difficult. It's not something we don't all know, um, but I found most of them friendly and polite and respectful. And the bathroom was a common question. Where the food to eat is a common question. So none of the things I saw in the survey were different than um, the reality that we had. But I mean, the most important reality is when you look at what happened in July with the water and I was so concerned, people were so concerned they were going to actually lose their business over that three week loss of water. You realize how important tourism is to this community. And um, it's, it's simple. And but as a person also who lives here, I mean, honestly, we all know when to go to the village. We know not to when to go to the village. We know when to shop. We know what times to shop. And I think part of it is we just have to accept the reality that part of our year is not ours, that we have our time in, in Woodstock. And we know what our times are. I mean, May is just a wonderful time in Vermont. So we have to live with both the fact that we have to accept our tourism, but also accept that we have to make money. That if we aren't if we aren't making money in this village, we are increasing taxes, we are increasing ed budgets, we are increasing all kinds of things. We need business to be regular. We need it to be important because that is what Woodstock is. And as residents of Woodstock, we need to acknowledge that and know that sometimes Woodstock's going to be really uncomfortable. Okay. Go High I Street what, versus what, Route okay. 4. So I, that's all I want to say. And I want to say thank you for listening to me. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
will be eventually what? Uncomfortable. 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 Thank you. Roger. Lisa, can you lower your hand? I'm Roger Logan, uh, live in Woodstock Village. I just want to address um, a couple of things about the role of the EDC as I understand it. Um, I've heard many times before that the EDC has some kind of special charge to serve the merchants. And as far as I know, as far as I can recall, that's not in the mission statement of the EDC. I think merchants, wherever they are in Woodstock, are clearly an important part of the constituency of the economy of Woodstock, and they sh they and there should be there should be programs and and i believe there have been programs to address the needs of the merchants and nobody who's got any sense is claiming that this mm -hmm. the woodstock economy has a significant tourist element in it which is a very important part of the economics of woodstock it's not the only part of the economics of woodstock and the EDC's role, as I understand it, should not be to not be to exclusively address the needs. And and not that I'm saying you're doing this, but but I sometimes hear comments that that should be your charge to exclusively address the needs of the merchants in the village. And I also want to address a little bit about the timing of this survey. Any time the survey was taken, factors, ex outside factors environmental factors would influence it. And I, I personally find it somewhat distressing to say that there's a time when I should not regard the town that I live in and that I pay taxes in as being mine, um, that it's it's being given over to, to others. And again, I am not saying that we don't need to find ways to market ourselves to Tourists, I would say let's market ourselves to the right kind of tourists, and that needs to be decided, and help the merchants and any other business that's dependent on tourism, but also it's the charge of the EDC to help to do economic development, and there are other kinds of businesses besides, and there are other kinds of people bringing money into this community, whether they're bricks and mortar businesses or not, besides the downtown merchants. And I love the downtown merchants, don't get me wrong, but that's not the charge of the EDC as I understand it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Patrick Fultz has his hand raised. Patrick, go ahead. Uh, John, I just want to clarify something. Uh, just when the 1% tax was voted on, uh, part of the sale of, of you know, agreeing to a 1% tax was that it would be used to help market Woodstock. Uh, that was a big part of the vote. So, you know, some people may not have been here when the when the initial vote was done, uh, but that that was the original reason for one percent tax. So, just just to clarify that. So, when you hear some of the people say, you know, they're supposed to help the downtown businesses, that's what people voted on, uh, you know, when this thing originally started. So, just as a yeah. as a clarifying well, uh, information. Well, just as a, as a factual matter, the language that the people voted on it, it was had only four words in it that was that were relevant economic and community development community yeah. development economic and community development those four words now I, that's that, that's is, not how it was sold john that's all I, I'm, I'm, saying. I'm simply i just don't want to say just factually what the people technically voted on was that whether anyone paid attention to that or whether they were paying attention to what was discussed beforehand i is not i just oh. I, you know I just, the politics. Politics is politics, and everyone. Yeah. Yeah, I just want to remind us. I just want to go back to. Point order. Are, we, are we are we each speaking once and being called upon to speak, or is this a debate? Well, because I've yeah. only called on Patrick. Well, it might be a debate, I but I only called on Patrick but, once. But, so. But somebody is speaking more than once. I am. Oh, you're, oh. You're, you're the chair. You can speak many times. <laughs> oh, I can. John, I can address that. No, no, I, no, no. We're not. We, this is citizen comment. So, I, yeah. sorry, I, I was trying to correct. Well, I should not have tried to correct the statement. I apologize for that. Guys, we have, other... we have, folks, we have the most open, wonderful structure of meetings in town. So, if someone needs to speak twice, John will address it. What we're trying to do is have everyone give the citizen comment and then go when we get into brainstorming, have everyone have another chance. But 
everyone's going to get to talk. We know that's how John runs these meetings. So don't, don't worry about it. Let's, let's All just, right, but, but let's step, I agree. Let's stick to the, let's stick to, um, to, to trying to stay one person at a time. I'll keep my mouth shut. Are there other comments? You've all, I mean, you're not eating the pizza. You're not commenting. <laughs> <laughs> this party is a failure. <laughs> uh, please just come up, Nick. You come up and Beth, if you want to do, but just, just get online. Um, I'm uh, Nick Barrow. Um, I've been here 42 years. Uh, I'm anti Ferro Jewelers. I was part of starting this ETC in 2015 with Gary Thulander, who was past president of the Woodstock Inn, and he's the current president of Chatham Bars in, in Cape Cod. He once came to one of our merchants' meetings and he said, if the downtown shops are not successful, the Woodstock Inn will cease to exist. And he went on to explain what would happen. And we sat down and tried to figure out how we could uh, keep the shops going. And in those days, there were many shops that were actually closed, uh, shuttered. There was always four or five shops that were just closed. or were going out of business, coming and going. Uh, and so the first line right on the EDC is, says that the goal, the number one goal was then, when we started it, and it still is, I think, is to help the existing and new businesses to prosper create job opportunities, and to be environmentally conscious. Um, I think that the tourism is, is essential to the survival of the Woodstock small businesses. Almost every shop in town is locally owned uh, for the most part. Um, most of the employees are local. And uh, the fact is that we have no big chain stores. We have no fast foods. We have no national out outlets like a lot of other towns in Vermont and a lot of other towns throughout the whole United States, um, Woodstock is very unique. So my thought is to keep it that way, but I do agree that the marketing should have a more targeted approach, um, possibly more for a, a June through, I mean, a January through June, uh, where would you, you do promotions and you don't promote anything, maybe July through the foliage season, because you really don't need it because people come anyway, no matter what. And I've tried it with my advertising where I, there were some times where I just stopped advertising totally in June uh, to my clients, to anyone. Did not do any advertising till November and my sales did not suffer at all. So, and I do think there was many more people this year. So maybe it has to be more targeted. And I also, I mean, it's made not, I, I said this once before, but I don't see why we couldn't target Vermont, Vermonters and, um, maybe New Hampshire and Vermonters local, basically, uh, in the November, December time, because the tourists don't really come that many tourists don't really come in November. Obviously, it's a very slow. They used to call it serenity season at the Woodstock Inn. Uh, so so November, we're very slow. OK, and then December, you don't really get busy till the end of December. So and when you do get busy in December, like for my store, and it's a retail jewelry store, so I can't speak for other stores, but when we get busy, it's, it's mostly um, lot, lots of locals from Hanover and the whole area that can pop over and get something for Christmas or whatever. So we don't seem to market to those people. And so I, I just think the marketing in some way should change to a more targeted approach. Right. Thank you. Beth? And there, I just... Um... I'm Beth Finlayson, I'm the director of the chamber, and I just lost exactly what I was gonna read. Um, I've, I've sat through these meetings since 2015, um, and I'm just gonna read the purpose of the economic development or EDC is to plan and implement sustainable economic and community development, development in Woodstock to develop and grow a sustainable tourism economy that provides a positive experience to the residents, visitors, and merchants, and to grow and diversify the resident population to enrich the community and quality of life. That's off the website. Um, so I, just so that there's not mixed messages here, um, the marketing committee meets every two weeks. Um, 
It includes the chamber and many EVTTC members, um, representatives from the Woodstock Inn. And um, I think we are doing targeted marketing. I think you would be surprised at um, the level that of the agency that we we are working with. Um, and so, you know, I think going forward, um, if you have any marketing questions, I'm sure that, that we would welcome you on a, well, next week, it's um, Monday, but mostly it's on a Friday morning at nine o'clock, so. Thank you. Um, I, I wanna, just given that it, people aren't rushing to the podium, I just wanna go back now um, and not that if someone has an urgent comment, but I would like to just sort of get a pulse of the group on. This would apparently, apparently I've started my whiteboard. I'm really having a bad day. Just don't start drawing any magic mark. Really? I just, I mean, I actually know what I'm doing. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Given the results of the survey and the comments that you've heard tonight or other comments you've heard, is there anyone who thinks that we shouldn't launch this project to think about the kinds of issues that were listed and pick a few of the things that we think would be feasible? And does anyone think that that's not a good use of EDC resources over the next six months and community resources? Because that's the question that we're trying to answer tonight. Uh, let me just, how could I say it in a different way? How, well, I'm, well, is there anyone who thinks we should devote resources? How's that? Okay. Yes. All right. Is there anyone who thinks, is there anyone who's unsure? Is there anyone? Okay. Okay. All right. That's fine. We're not, we're not, we're not, that's the point. We're not, we're, we're leaving completely open. The question is, should we try to figure out what are the things we should address? Okay. Right. Right. John, just, just so you know, you're not getting any hands up in the, in the, our crowd because you got to tell them what to do to raise their hand or lower their hand. All right. I, I guess if, I, I prefer to ask the question the way I did because it's answerable in a hybrid meeting. So would any, if any, does, is there anyone who thinks we shouldn't devote resources to address the concerns? If you're online or here, just, if you're here, just raise your hand. It's fine to, be, to say that. If you're online, just raise your hand. And I, I, yeah. There's no naysayers, John, on the uh, online section. Okay, if you, if you are a naysayer and are trying to figure out how to raise your hand, then um, you, you can, um, you can put it into the chat and, and Todd, maybe you can take a look. But I think that, I think that we've, look at this, this is perfect. We've got 20, it's 20 seconds to seven. <laughs> and we answered the question, which now enables us to go to the next half of the meeting, which is, oh, which is okay. We, we need to address some of the concerns that were raised, which ones we address will depend on how important they were. And, and maybe we need to do some more research to figure that out exactly. Although there are a few like dining and parking that are at the top of everyone's list. And also what resources they require and therefore how we could do it. I mean, for example, and I'm making this up because I've thought about this, done a little bit of research on this. If solving the parking problem, if the only way to solve the parking problem was to build an underground garage, I don't think it is. And if an, if an underground garage costs $30 million, I don't think it does, then we might not pursue it, even though it was at the top of the list because we put, you know. So that's the process that we're about to launch. And we're now gonna spend no more than an hour. And we're just gonna create a list of what might we do. And the rules about brainstorming are really simple. I hope they're on the last chart. Yeah, no evaluation and no response. And, and there are no bad ideas tonight. Tomorrow morning, there may be a lot of bad ideas, but tonight there are no bad ideas. And Todd is gonna record 
for those of you that are remote, you probably can't see the flip chart. You can see um, Greta in the corner there. Greta, raise your arm. So she's recording them, but you can't read it. So Todd is going to record it electronically and we'll distribute it to everybody. We'll post it on the website so that you can see just the raw list of ideas, unevaluated, but no evaluations. Don't respond to the last person's, Jeff, that was the stupidest idea about the bus. <laughs> don't. don't. The ones I don't like are going to be an incredibly small font, but then, <laughs> Todd, maybe that's a good idea. Why don't you put the ideas into the, well, Todd is going to record them. So, so yeah. if you have an idea, line up, um, we're going to try to rotate through so that people can, everyone gets a chance to say it once. And then when we run out of that, we can, we can go around again. Also, don't advocate too much for your idea. Just describe it. So okay. my first idea uh, is um, I agree with uh, uh, um, parking for buses in um, uh, East End Park only because there's a big correlation between the amount of time you spend in Woodstock and the amount of money that you spend. And I think it behooves everybody. So if you say they, people are forced to uh, park in East End Park and walk, they're likely to spend three hours. That means they have lunch and time for shopping or whatever. That's one idea. Can I do what we do? Another big idea that's really super important, you need to have a campaign called, I didn't give as much thought, but um, stay on the sidewalk. So, you know, don't go up onto someone's porch unless there is a building, unless it's a building that says it's a store and it's open and it's public, stay on the sidewalk. Because um, we've had a lot of trouble with that this um, past year. And um, during the winter, if we come across, you know, if we decide to come up with these, um, uh, new bus rules, we should um, contact the uh, the bus companies and tell them. And it's not a good idea to let them off in town because that gets abused. That does get abused. I've seen, uh, I walk my dog. Right, don't justify it. Just, just tell us the ideas. Basically, contact the bus companies and, and tell them the, they have to park in, you know, and if they can't park at uh, East End Park, then find another town to visit. Okay, enforce the rules. And, well. Yeah, enforce the rules. Okay. And that was it. Okay, thank you. Did say who you are? Yep, uh, David McKay from uh, the Shire Woodstock. Um, the two things that we hear most regularly, and they've already really been touched upon, are uh, the lack of dining options and uh, the hours. So, you know, if somebody arrives at Thursday or Friday at, a, at 5 or 6 p.m., they may not have an opportunity to go into town and experience the shopping. And to the extent that the EDC could be involved in coordinating um, amongst the proprietors and, uh, and the merchants to try to, even if it's on a trial basis, uh, a coordinated response in which the shops would be open till say 8 p.m. on Friday and Saturday. May have been done before, I'm not sure, but it, it's a concern that we, we oftentimes hear. Thank you, great. Graham Hankey, uh, I live here in Woodstock. Um, food trucks, fantastic idea. Um, I, I think that's, that's the solution. We just have to figure out how to put it into effect. Um, as far as buses, I think the buses are, uh, the low hanging fruit. I think that term is for There's, there's definitely a tangible improvement that could be easily won and we'll figure out what to do with the buses. Obviously can't ban them, but at the same time. I have no problem with not having buses loading and unloading anywhere on the Oval or, or on the Green or on Elm Street. Mm -hmm. Figuring out how to use East End Park, maybe with an internal shuttle service, um, there's a good solution, I think, and not a difficult one to get to. Third thing and last thing is better information sharing. I mean, I... I it just would be so helpful, I think, for folks coming to town who don't know much about town that if there are just a few posters to put up, good sized posters that have pertinent information about where bathrooms are, what are the key restaurants, um, anything else that people would need. And we have the technology now that those posters could be updated, you know, for every major event and, and rolled out. And, uh, I know some folks would want to say, "Hey, let's let's put it uh, online," and but just keep them traditional and uh, 
throw them up before every major event, and I think that could cure a lot of problems that we have now. Thank you. Thank you. Could you put add the shuttle service to East End during peak? I think that was a specific idea. John, uh, uh, Lee, uh, Lawler has her hand up in the chat area. All right. So hold on one we, second. Lisa, go ahead. Uh, we need to remember that a lot of people cannot walk from East End and that they are people who are disabled and we cannot deny them access into the village of Woodstock. So we cannot forget that. And we open up a whole lot of issues with the Americans with Disabilities Act. So it's important that everyone realize that we can't say you can't come into the village. And unless we provide adequate access for both people with disabilities and quote unquote normal people, we can't stop buses from dispersing in Woodstock. Okay, so could you put as an idea, I want to, since we're not evaluating, Lisa, could you just put the as, American guess, just put serve, Americans with Disability Act. So we need well, to I, consider and not forget the Americans with Disabilities a, Act. A way to resolve the ADA concerns. Right. That's, right. that's the idea. Yes, thank you. Thank Shuttle you for mind. doing yeah, that, John. Yeah. Yes, go ahead. Hi, my name is Leanne DeBosham, and I'm a resident of Woodstock, a new resident. Um, I have been a, a resident of a famous uh, spring break town in Florida, and they had an 18% bed tax. So I, um, I would one of my suggestions would be to raise the tax to support the EDC. Um, <clears throat> another thing I would like to see is um, some sort of police presence on the streets. I never see a cop walking around town to like help with directions or if there is all these problems that people are saying, maybe we had some like a cop on the beat, so to speak, um, that would probably help with a lot of issues. Um, the other thing I would like to say, I live, um, the middle bridge is, uh, it butts our property on Mountain Avenue and the owners, and it's a condominium on the corner of River and Mountain Avenue. And the owners, uh, all the owners in the building uh, have suggested that um, I come and speak to you about closing off Mountain Avenue during high peak times from river to the green. So um, in front of our home, close off that street to give, because people are walking in the street anyways. And um, we oh, have the bridge. Yes, let people walk on the bridge, but not cars. Oh, I see. Yeah, no vehicles on the car between the green and river because we have seen so many near accidents just sitting on our porches. And I'm I'm afraid that somebody is gonna get hurt. Some and especially with all the Instagrammers not paying attention, stepping into the traffic. Um, maybe they could use that area to put food trucks or I heard that, that they used to rent out the middle bridge for and make money for the village. Um, so I know we are the only residents on that one block area and all the owners in that condominium would like to have that street closed off. And I don't know how yeah, the rest right. of the community feels but that's how we out tonight we just want to record that's a great very interesting idea thank you hold on let me just check to see um all right uh hold on one second so kimball first and then and then todd i guess you can't do it uh kimball bealey resident of woodstock and owner of elevation clothing um for me most customers come in wondering where to eat and so ideally we spend a ton of time googling which restaurants are open what day and all that it would be so helpful and make it so much easier if we had a write up a text every morning or at least at the beginning of the week of what restaurants are going to be open which ones are going to be closed because if you can give a happy answer of oh don't worry not everything's closed malaza's open you know but with a quick answer instead of being like oh shoot what day is it i don't remember who's open who's closed it would be so nice to have just an answer that was quick that, I and mean, we don't have to print it out on paper, but um, it would be nice if we could have a quick answer of who's serving coffee, who's serving lunch and who's serving dinner. Daily text, just add that part to it, Greta, because as a 
that aspect of it is interesting, I think, to me. Yeah, list of dining options on daily text, et cetera. Is that a good way to put it? Uh, one second, T uh, Todd, and then Sam. Not to debate, but I went to Sante the other day because the signs said they were open right in the window and they were closed. But you know, so sometimes they didn't even know. But uh, I think for me, you've heard this before, and it goes to what Susie said. Um, and you know, I think bathrooms are important, and and the bathroom is only important like peeing on the sidewalk. If you can't find one, you have a horrible experience. Uh, and you might pee in the sidewalk. So I also think that the verbiage of visitor center reminds me of triptychs. So maybe there's a way to brand the visitor center as something that people that aren't of the triptych generation might understand it's a great place to go and meet a person like Beth and go to the bathroom. Uh, when I came to Woodstock as an adult, as a kid, I never thought about it as an adult. I didn't even know what was going i didn't know what a visitor, a visitor center to me is uh not what actually beth and her people offer there and the bathrooms there so some sort of idea of expanding or explaining what a visitor center has to offer and maybe a rebrand of that sort of idea okay all right thank you um sam and then deborah you want to go ahead Ted? Mm -hmm. go. sure um, Sam Di Natale, Village Woodstock resident and a restaurant owner in town. Um, I'm going to apologize. I'm going to say comments and also suggestions because I just figured I'd do it all at once and wasn't going to be able to organize my thoughts enough to do them at separate times. <laughs> um, uh, in terms of marketing, um, I have no doubt that the marketing is targeted. Um, I think a lot of the complaints of uh, the wanting the, to target um, the marketing is related to buses. The buses are going to come, whether you market to them or not. Those are tour companies that have known about here forever. So targeted marketing, I'm, I, I am very confident, is already happening. Um, that being said, uh, as you know, I think Beth said recently, there was 2,000 visitors a day this past fall. Um, I would not be in support of additional marketing, maybe the same or less, but I don't feel that that's where the money should be focused on currently. Um, people are coming. We have a lot of people coming. What I think we need to be focusing on is how do we handle those people? Um, for, I mean, for instance, public urination at, like, is not acceptable <laughs> and we've all experienced it. So that's whether the, whether the, um, one visitor, only one visitor commented on it, the fact that enough locals have witnessed it is like, that's a severe problem, right? Um, I also thought it was really interesting that the um, comments of why they come to what what draws them to coming here is the environment and the beauty of the town, right? So that's actually what I've been saying for a long time is I would love to see some of that's what is drawing that will draw people. And those Instagrammers and those vloggers and all those people, they're also doing marketing for us without us paying for them. Sometimes some people give them kickbacks, but so having the town beautiful is investing in marketing in a way already. And I really think that putting more money towards infrastructure and and painting and cleaning and there are buildings in town that really could use a paint job and encouraging those people who own those buildings in some way financially to do that, I think would be fantastic. Um, I love the idea of I'm just going to support some ideas already. The unloading of the bus is someplace else. Of course, we should look into the whole uh, the disability thing, but I think that that is um, important. Um, food trucks, completely agree. Food trucks are a great idea. And I'm somebody mm -hmm. here who has a restaurant. People want to come to places who have where they have a lot of food options. And they're not going to stop coming here if they don't have a ton of food options. And I'd love to say that I have the capacity to open like three places, but honestly, I just 
I physically cannot do it. <laughs> I, would, yeah, I would be dead on the floor. So um, one of the uh, to add on to that idea, food trucks t- to ensure that they come, there are there are limited food trucks in Vermont. So how to get them is they have to make sure that they're going to make a base amount of money. So the EDC could in some way guarantee, hey, you come, and if you don't make that amount of money, we'll cover it. Until they are coming enough to see that there's the money to be made there. Got it. That's um, something because that's one of the things of getting them to come is they need to know that they're going to make that money. So maybe for the first year, guarantee it to them. Um, you can have one more idea. I have one more idea. I'm so sorry. Um, and yeah, I think, th- and uh, just another comment about just uh, visitor um, recommendations are a lot of them are based on the crowdedness and when this survey was done. You know, um, thank you okay. for your time. Thank you. Um, I, hold on a second. I'm gonna, Deborah, um, you have to see, you have suggestions, not react. Right? So go ahead, give us a yeah. um, I think part of it is how we frame it, and it is also the dissemination of the information of who we are and what's going on, I think is a really, is really key. Um, I, I think if there are these, these boards that, we can have that are digital, but that we are structured that fit within the look and feel of the community. So it's not boards like in Times Square, we can make them look and fit within the community. And there are three different places within the community that again, have the look and feel, but have the information and can be changed so people can go to it and get the information that they need. I think that would be a great way of doing it. and that. Therefore, there's the, the ability to get the information. Maybe it's even the touch a touch screen thing that they can get. I mean, there's some really cool ways. And again, look and feel. We'll make it look so it, it you know, yes. maybe, uh, you know, barnwood around it or something. Okay, but the other piece of it is part of, and we could do this by um, working with uh, reservations at all of the um, uh Airbnb at all of the um, places that uh, have people come is that there is some sort of agreed upon campaign of you're our guests, welcome, welcome to our community. Let me tell you a little bit about our community. And this goes out to every guest. Welcome to our small community. We want to tell you a little bit about us. We're a small community. This is what you need to know. You're, you're coming into our community. You're going to be, there are houses in this community that are right upon, these are private homes. You know, whatever the top four things are that we need to let people know that about what it is to come into a community that, because we're not Disneyland, you know, and that goes out in a very um, welcoming way, but it also is a, here's our expectations of you kind of way that goes out to everybody who's about to come and be welcomed into our community as a guest in whatever hotel or B and B that they're coming into. I think the key word there Greta, is for me, Greta, it was expectations. That that's yeah. somehow scratch that down. Joe, can we just go ahead, they were standing up? You go next and then Joe and then go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh hi, Becky Bretel from Woodstock Gallery. Years ago parking did exist in Woodstock East and we had a trolley that took people around. And I don't know, I know it was um, a temporary test thing, but it was fabulous and everyone loved it. It would be handicap accessible. And I'd like to see if we could look into that again. Fantastic. Thank you. Joe, and then- No, it's okay. Charlotte. Go ahead. Uh, Charlotte Hollingsworth, just uh, one comment about traffic and hopefully a solution. To the problem because I noticed a lot of complaints uh, about actually people that worked here that came from Bridgewater that were late to work because it took 45 minutes to get into the village. Um, and this goes with a comment about uh, police presence. There wasn't any police presence in the village and I don't know why they cannot direct traffic during foliage at all the crosswalks and if they did, because 
people just step out and then, but they would have marketed times of where everybody crosses and then the traffic moves and you have to wait a few minutes until you can cross again. And I really think, I mean, we're paying a lot of money for the police department. I think they can do this for us. Ready, guys? Yeah. I think at this, at this, well, let me just see if there's anyone who hasn't made a suggestion. Can you get online? Because Susie is bustling with multiple suggestions. I mean, if you haven't made one, get online in front of Susie. So <laughs> hold on a second, Roger. Yeah, Joe, sure. go, no, ahead. Go, ahead. I, no, go ahead, Joe. I, 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 you were before me. Joe. So, it's just, you know, I, I don't know. Hold on a second. Can you get the police directing traffic? Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay sorry. You put it up there. I don't know really what I'm about to say. We're really pause with any comments or recommendations or just observations. Well, but try to make it a recommend, a, an idea. Okay. That's, that was something we should do. But I don't have ideas. But let me, something let, we me, let, me, let, me <clears throat> let me put it this way. I really feel that the town is suffering from uh, victims of maintenance to fill. What do I mean by that? There's a lot of things right now that we should be doing, in my opinion, instead of spending a lot of money in marketing, to make the town a better place to visit. That hasn't been done in the past. I think in the past, the focus was on, because it wasn't as obvious that we are a tourist-based economy. The focus then was on the focus of being an agricultural economy. We had a lot of dairy farms. Well, as a result, stuff just wasn't taken care of. And as a result, we're not, in my opinion, reaching the, the potential that this town has to be an incredibly attractive place. I mean, we are a gorgeous community. I mean, I raised my kids, I love it here. But it, things just haven't been done to make this a, a tourist acceptable more than it has been in the past. And maybe I'm not saying the right words. What would be two? Okay, two for example, I'll give you some them. examples. I mean, we, we have sidewalks that need to be done. They're terrible. We have holes in sidewalks where there should be trees. I mean, I, I think the only money that was spent on the green since I've been here is annually they hire some young man to paint the fence. That's it. You know, things like that are not being done and haven't been done. And I think doing those things is going to be enough to get the job done and to get the people here. That's my thing. So renovate the green is the second idea. Right. Well, that's one of the ideas. Yeah. Like like Teagle's Landing got done, you know. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Beautiful. Okay. Thank you, Roger. Um, Roger Logan Woodstock. Oh no, let's go ahead. See, <laughs> I see you. You're next, Roger. Go ahead. Um, so I think one thing that we have not pursued or not pursued as as much as I would like to see it pursued is to regard Woodstock as a hub, in terms of tourism, I'm speaking strictly, regard Woodstock as a hub of a, of a much broader experiential place to be. Um, I think a lot of our communications has focused very, very um, strictly on getting people to come into the town of Woodstock and stay in the town of Woodstock where there's Mount Escutney and you can drive up a road to the top of Mount Escutney and it's the most beautiful place in the world. And there's a gigantic, I, I think there's a large segment of, of potential visitors that we aren't necessarily reaching out to. And I think that we might be happier with the behavior of some of those visitors. There's people who could come here to do gravel grinding. There's people who could come here to do hike amazing hiking it's not in right necessarily all in 
outside the town of Woodstock, but it's part of the, the Woodstock should, in my opinion, as a tourist location, look at itself as a hub. You you stay here, you go out hiking, you come back, you go to a restaurant, and that tends to distribute some of the the pain of overcrowding. You don't necessarily lose visitors that way, but you're dispersing them, and you're also appeal making making a a specific effort to appeal to people who are interested in doing things like going hiking, going going um stand up paddle boarding at at Silver Lake. It's not in Woodstock, but it's part of what makes Woodstock an attractive location. When we used to visit here, we didn't stay in Woodstock all day because how much shopping can you do? We would hike in Billings and then we would go elsewhere in this beautiful area. Um, so I think we need to do a much better job of looking at Woodstock as a place you come to because it's surrounded by Within 100 miles of here, there's so much you can do. Um, so that's that's my suggestion. All right, thank you. Uh, Eaton and then. Thanks, John. Um, so I've got a, a suggestion and then um, also an invitation, uh, especially to everybody in the room and on Zoom. So my suggestion is I, I love a lot of these ideas, things I haven't thought of before. Um, in all of these suggestions, anything that that gets done, um, one of the things that I know we're trying to do with the trustees is how do we coordinate better with when ideas come up? It's great if it happens at an EDC meeting, but if the select board doesn't hear it, if the trustees don't hear it, if the municipal manager doesn't hear it, if the DPW doesn't hear it, then it doesn't it doesn't happen or it doesn't happen as well. So throughout this process, as as we're going through, I would love to figure out how can we communicate with each other and, and organize this? Because it can't just be the EDC doing things. Some of these some of these ideas need ordinance changes or some of these need approval by um, one or both boards or it needs to go ahead from Eric for a suggestion. Um, so as we're going through this, just trying to think about um, how we can be communicating, all the boards can be communicating with each other so that we can get these things done in a comprehensive way as opposed to siloing off ideas and jobs and then six months later going oh i didn't know you were doing that um so that's one so that's my suggestion um and uh and then my invitation um and john was at our our joint budget meeting the other night which was so fun between the trustees and the select board a lot of things i'm also hearing require municipal money um and so the time to get those ideas out the time to talk about that is now the trust the trustees and the select board have had two meetings already we are about to have the trustees will have another meeting on monday the select board will do another meeting we hope to get our budgets done and locked down and ready for town and village vote by the end of the month so if you have ideas if you want money directed different places come to those meetings because hearing about it in march at the meeting is not super helpful hearing about it after the budget has passed is not super helpful because the the money is where it is we can move things around a little bit but it's really important that we get that input now so that we can make decisions um because and of course that budget doesn't kick in until june so this really is long-term planning so i'd invite everybody to come to those meetings um and 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 also to be talking to um the finance committee which john is also a part of they, as of last night, I discovered that they have switched from doing line item budget things to they're gonna be working with um, departments and working on how to look forward for the entire town um, and how we can do better in lots of different ways. So that forward looking stuff, I think is really important. And I think we can do that same thing with the EDC and with, uh, with the elected uh, boards. Thanks. Thank you. Um, yeah, I'm gonna go. Look. Yeah, yeah. You can go next. Yeah, go ahead. Hi, I'm Susan Fuller. I live in South Woodstock. Um, just a little background. I moved here in 1967. My father was the chief of police at the time. Um, I now have an STR. So I pay 1%, you know, to all you guys. Um, and I've seen Woodstock. And it has been the same 
a little more crowded, sometimes and sometimes not. But we've always been a tourist town. And there's always been times when you say, oh, don't go in the village because all the tourists are there and you do your things early. I think someone mentioned that. So there are some real significant things that could happen. Um, I remember in the early um, 70s, no one, I mean, even considered having a food truck. You couldn't even have a coffee cart on the green. It was like sacred territory. Food trucks are a great idea. I love Jeffrey's idea of having another one at the East End. I think having the buses stop at the East End is a really good idea. And, and when we're looking at these different ideas, the more people are saying, yes, that, we should be making little hash marks next to them saying, yes, this is a good idea. Where some of the money I see from the EDC going to is another restroom at the East End Park. That is where you take that chunk of money and put it in. The buses stop there. They can eat there. They can poop and pee there. You know, that's a good spot for that money to go to. And I'm sure we can hook into the septic system there. So that would be something I would say would be primary because you've got one there. Then I would take the little information booth that's on the green and I would put that bulletin board that Roger or somebody mentioned, and I would have the website for Woodstock listed right there. So the stores aren't going like this where they're trying to find them and pull up the, the information. There it is, all those people with their little cell phones walking around the green go, oh yeah. And then they can see that day, the, you know, or the restaurants that are open on Mondays. Because at my little STR, I give that information to the people. I tell them, look on the Woodstock website, see what's happening in Woodstock this week. I tell them where to go to eat. I also tell them to go bicycling down at Mount Escutney because they've got great mountain biking trails. You know, I tell them to go paddle uh, swimming up at Silver Lake because it's free. And there's a nice little store right there where they can get a sandwich. You know, I tell them to go up to um, Woodward uh, Reservoir because it's a great place to go kayaking. And you can rent boats down at first stop. That, again, that hub where Woodstock is a hub keeps the people out. People who come to my place, I see the receipts in the trash. Thousand, and they tell me, a thousand dollars. They really shopped at your place. They loved it. <laughs> <laughs> so they're spending money here. And everyone has not peed on a sidewalk. You know, those <laughs> people are really nice family-oriented people who come here to enjoy the beauty of Woodstock, the same that we like because we live here. I do agree, because I came from a police family, the police, I think during foliage, whoever said that, get down there and you get on by what we used to call the dummy and you just tell them, go, go, go. Let the police people cross. Police presence, Directing traffic on a busy day in the middle of town works wonders. All right, excellent. All right, thank you. I want to cut no. line. I just wanted to put myself on you. Oh, okay. All right. So, I, I, where were you? You remember where you were on the line? No. All right, you go after Nick. Okay. Go ahead, Susie. So, I have um, one request. I think it's really super important that we quantify what the economy is because no one uh, uh, disagrees that the uh, we have an important tourist uh, component to the economy. But, you know, we also have lots and lots of people who work remotely, who have retired, they're bringing money here, they're spending money. And it's like, if we continuously say we are a tourist economy, then our lifestyle requirements get thrown out. So I think let's end this. Let's do a systematic study of who's paying the bills, what's the contribution, who, you know, what is the contribution of people hiring lawn services and painters and everything else? What, how does that contribute to the economy so that we can have a balanced view? The second thing, I really think what you need to do with the marketing is you need to set some metrics and you need to say, we want to uh, spend money on people who are going to stay here because people who stay, the longer you spend in a town or a place, the more you're going to spend. <laughs> Right. So instead of you know, I've, I've looked at a lot of the marketing materials and it's like it's stuff that you could do um, in an afternoon. 
right? And then you've seen, you've seen everything that there is to see, you know, that's, that's publicized. And then it's like, well, what are you going to do? There's no reason to stay, right? So I think that if you were to say, you know, just say, yeah, just market it and set yourself metrics. Like, you know, how many, um, how long are you going to, are, are you getting these visitors to stay um, as part of your marketing, as part of your outcomes? And, you know, and just really sort of like, uh, marketing towards duration, not these like buses that come in to take photos of the bridge and then leave. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, I'm scared. How do I write that? Um, I would say marketing yeah, metrics, create marketing metrics and quantify economy. This is a study of, yeah. Well, quantify economy is a good, good, it's a good way. To Hi, Paul Jensen, Woodstock. Uh, two ideas. One is around peak times, looking at Un, unutilized or underutilized commercial space or even outdoor areas and making it easier to create pop-up uh, stores or activities that might solve a problem of, you know, the, the aesthetics and the optics of having empty space at the same time it could help to disperse people a little more. There are a lot of local makers and bakers and things who I think would be interested in that. And then also looking at how to make it more pedestrian friendly and reduce utilization of cars during peak areas. And actually throughout all the years, looking at, um, again, pedestrian infrastructure, but also bike lanes. It's a very inherently bikeable area, but it's actually not that safe in a lot of places. I think bike lanes could help do that too. Thanks. All right, thank you, Paul. Nick? I have one more comment that, um, one of the things that I've always looked at is, uh, I, if the ADC could have release the historical parking lot, historic side parking lot and then uh, make it a parking lot for employees like we have behind Mechanic Street. That Those are paid spots. The employees don't have to come running back and forth to feed the meters all day. And um, we that took a long time for us to get that through. And, and we, we all, the merchants buy those spots for their employees. Then you can put all the employees in the historical society parking lot be a paid, probably the EDC wouldn't even wind up paying that much because there's 35 spots there or whatever. And um, that, that would be one thing. And then the only reason I would suggest it is um, I've been saying for years, if you want to really improve experience in Woodstock, take the meters down, gone. But we have more problems with people coming in and saying, I don't even know how to use them or they don't even work. Now, People say that that can't be done because of uh, um, camera. Right. Sorry, you just knocked us off the camera there. Just point it back to us. Yeah, there you go. That's fine. That's good enough. Thank right. you. That's fine. That's People good. say, you know, that they can't be done. But here's the point. We have a store in Stowe, where my, my son does, and I'm up there quite a bit. They're just as busy as us in the foliage season, and they have no meters. They have two-hour parking signs. That's all it says is two-hour parking sign. Chatham in Cape Cod, I go there now and then. They never had meters. They, right, no, they get the idea. Basically. Okay, and Palm <laughs> Beach too. And and I asked the police in Stowe, how do you enforce the two hours? They said, we don't. We don't enforce it because people come and they know that they have two hours or they think they have two hours and they're gone. And I'll tell you, I have never missed parking. When I drive into Stowe to go to my son's store in the busiest of times, I always find a space. Okay, That's all right, thank you. I've said that Marion was next and then you're next. So go ahead, Marion. Um, so I know we're not supposed to comment, but really good suggestions. That's all I'm going to say. It's just okay, I'm, I'm excited by that. Um, so two ideas. Uh, one is kind of piggybacking on the idea of facilitating pop-ups. Um, you know, Burlington does like a, and I think they call it like a holiday fair, but it's really tasteful. It's little booths. It's like a European style kind of craft thing that is, is set up every weekend, right? So something along those lines. Um, and the other is thinking about um, some of the money that now goes for marketing, thinking about that more in terms of communication. And so we're talking about messages that need to come out about how to interact with the community, um, having correct updated information on the website, you know, sort of these kinds of things that maybe some of that budget for marketing should be more communicating um, how to interact, you know, kind of piggyback on a lot of what people said, but thinking about how do we communicate with visitors to make it a positive experience. Okay, thank you. Hi, Lauren Fisher. I'm a village resident and uh, co-owner of Focus Gallery, and I also do 
photo workshops where people come in from all over the world to photograph the area. And this is the first year I didn't sell out my fall foliage workshop. And it was because of negative feedback. People have gotten uh, closures of farms nearby and also the downtown experience. Um, what specifically they say about downtown experience? Food. I mean, I, I have people here for a week and, and we have to go elsewhere most of the time to, to feed I'm them. Find a place to eat on a weekend. Yeah, Mondays, Sundays, on the weekend. Saturdays. Okay. So if, if they're here for five days, three of the days, I know we can't eat in Woodstock. So the, the, so the number one issue is food. Is that why you didn't sell out, you think? That's one of them. It, it's the, there's a feel out there now that people aren't welcome. Mm -hmm. And that is, that would be devastating to Woodstock. To push that because of what happened in Poplar and that road up there, and, it's closing them down. And Reading. And Reading, yeah. 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 So anyway, uh, suggestions. Uh, number one is see what it would take to get a 5G cell tower in town. Um, uh, another suggestion is uh, uh, signs signage for the Welcome Center and restroom. People don't mind walking a half a block from our place to the restroom, but the sign is always pointing at our place and they, they think we're it. And so we're we're shooting them back over the other way. Um, it th does. Um, so just a, a couple more just simple uh, uh, signs on the street would, would do it. Okay. All right, fantastic. Thank you, Lauren. Um, did I miss someone else? Um, Okay, all right, it's I'll put you small. at the end. No, that's right. Sam, go ahead. Yeah. The two of you and then Deborah. Apologies that you're saying me again. I realized there was a couple of things I forgot to, to bring up. Um, and I'm going to count this as my second because I didn't come up for comments, right? Um, but these are ideas, right? Yes, they are ideas. <laughs> Touche. Um, one, of the, one of the things I just want to bring up is that you know a lot of these conversations are a lot of conversation related to short term term solutions okay um a lot of along the more long term solutions that we're getting a lot of conversation regarding dining and not having options dining you to to, to have dining you need to have the people to serve them <laughs> And I know you guys have had a lot of focus on housing. That needs, I just want to make sure that this, these conversations does not take away from that. Um, I have lost multiple employees because of housing. Um, they just couldn't have a fun. I'm currently renting and then possibly also renting a second house specifically so that my staff don't have to move and can continue working in, working in the area. Um, so, um, along those lines, I mean, like I was saying long-term solution and it's going to probably cost a lot of money and can't be done immediately. But for instance, there's a lot of empty motels in Killington right now that I bet could be bought for cheap and made into studio apartments. And then you can have a shuttle from there with people. Killington is part of the school district. There's going to be a lot of people who would be willing to live in Killington so that their kids can go to the school district. That's just you know throwing something out. That's a big project, but it's it would. Um, so yes, continue to. And I know you've also had a big focus on childcare. Please don't stop focusing on that. That is also a big portion of what's going on as well. Um, like I said, you can mark and we can spend a ton of money and market for people to come here till we're blue in the face. But if there's no one here to serve them, then it's moot. And we need to make sure that there's a big focus on the workforce here in town. One of the things of the parking situation is one of, one of the possibilities is maybe each business is allowed a certain amount of parking, workers parking permits for like, you know, depending on how, what your workforce load is for the, for the town. Um, this amount, you're, this business you're allotted because of your, you know, how much you contribute to the EDC or something, your percentage of you're allowed this many permits or something along those lines. Um, I also just want to, last I guess this is my last comment. Um, the 
the signs are great. We can talk about signs. I think it's good. I think the idea of putting it towards it being a part of marketing is a good mindset. I do think that we need to give everybody's expectations for signs very low. Signs are for people who don't read them. And just remember that. Just like, I'm just saying, you guys, like, like meeting notices. yeah, like notices that you put in and meeting notices and things like that. Signs are for people who don't read them. And so put, keep your expectations low because they could do all this stuff and it could make no difference. So just also remember that. Thank you, folks. Hi, she's the first. And then okay, my last thing, which I forgot to say last time was, I think that the large brick expanse that we have, I think, on Mechanic Street, which at one time in the early 2000s, an art uh, group did big murals on there and hung them. I think and they were canvas on canvas. But I think I've just gotten off a trip across the country for seven weeks to a lot of small historic towns. There are some beautiful murals out there with information. If it was a beautiful mural, it would catch people's attention and it could have a incorporate the sign to the <laughs> restroom because there's a little dinky sign nobody can see. Yeah. And that would eliminate having to have all those paper weird things. So. But beautiful down through that alley. Girl. <laughs> That's Basically. Awesome. All right, Deb. Yeah, I, I don't remember who said it, but they were talking about um, keeping things open late, you know, to a little later. Um, a good stepping stone, but also an easy way of promoting would be a first Thursday or first Friday or just like something that we could wrap our heads around and, you know, get it going and um, be able to build some energy around and see what that is. No, you can see it. somebody's taking their no. But it's just something to think about as maybe no, a stepping no stone. No evaluation. No. Um, to just do it one night per month and see what happens. It's a way of getting it going. Patrick's got his hand up. Yeah, Patrick, go ahead. Uh, to, to Deb's point, make it the second Friday because White River does the first Friday. Yeah, I'm just, I'm not saying I'm <laughs> first Thursday, uh, Friday, Wednesday, whatever. Just, yeah, yeah, no, I know. Um, I'm just teasing. I'm just teasing. That, that counts as an idea. That counts as an idea, Patrick. Patrick, uh, go ahead. The, I think one of the things, you know, uh, in, in the time I've been in the EC, one of the biggest issues keeps coming down to housing because it doesn't matter whether you have more restaurants, more businesses, more whatever. If you don't have housing, you can't hire the employees. You know, you got nowhere to bring new new residents in. I, I think the EDC should should reevaluate the uh, housing way they're approaching things right now from the onesie twosies and and pull that money and say, okay, let's find a developer that we can find ways to make a big impact on Woodstock instead of, you know, one here, one there, one here, one there, you know, a, a 40 unit building that could have co-ops con or condos and, and mid range pricing and stuff. Just, I, I think we need to, if to put John's point before we wanted to think big uh, before, and I think we need to think big again uh, because everything comes down to, housing we can't have employees because we don't have housing we can't have new residents because we don't have housing we can't have new businesses because we don't have housing you know so i think you know if you're going to put a big push in anything i think there needs to be a real effort to look at a big solution for housing and not a little solution All right thank you Roger. i just um i i was very intrigued by this idea of doing pop-ups um and i think that's that, that could be even a bigger idea. I think it's a great idea to start filling spaces that aren't filled during times when it would be, and, and, and perhaps the EDC could put some money toward that and call it business incubation. So if you're thinking about you wanna start a gallery or a store, it's a way to try it out. It's a way to see if you really like interacting with the public in that way. So I think it would be both expand the horizons of what people can do and also help people who are who are potentially thinking about starting if you really love making scones make scones for a week and see if if it's a viable business okay right, thank you todd yeah i think i'm just in hearing all this chatter about the pops one i think it's a, it's a good my idea to piggyback on that is to 
research incentive. We can't force businesses to be open if they don't want to be open. But if we incentivize a business or a pop-up to be open in a certain window, we're there for, they're, we're enforcing it, right? So like looking at what it might take to make sure like the trustees did with the food trucks, for example, examining that in a financial aspect might be a good idea. All right, thank you. I, I have, I'm just looking around if there aren't any other, I just have two ideas, uh, two ideas to add. One is to staff the information center. We talked about putting stuff on it. Let's staff it. We're used to. Yeah, right. And I'm sure it was very useful. The, sec the second, staff the information center. No, it's during it's during foliage. I mean, yeah. during you know. You're talking about the little building. Yeah. 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 Putting maybe a big eye. Well, anyway, but yeah, just staffing it, having you know. Um. The second is a parking. Um, idea and I just want to I just want to uh, put some context around this um, we don't have a parking space problem we have a parking access problem on September 30th this past season which was not the peak weekend it was a Saturday it was very nice weather at two o'clock in the afternoon I drove from the rec center to the hardware store and I stopped in every large parking lot so there's two at the rec center there's um uh the um Otakuichi health center max sunset farms and the hardware store i think i've got all of them there were 248 empty spaces at two o'clock in the afternoon on a peak weekend there were at there were 60 space there's just an example there's 60 spaces at the rec center there were two cars and there's two parking lots they own it. at the Otakuichi Health Center there's 69 spaces there were four or five cars now when people talk about a parking problem what they mean is they want to go into Gilling and they want to park in one of those two spaces and by the way I so do I I mean I you know that's I don't you know but but seriously more seriously they don't want to walk from the rec center so I think what we could examine is some kind of transportation, maybe valet parking for four weeks, maybe only for residents, where you pull into a valet parking service where you pull somewhere in downtown, maybe by the History Center's parking lot, and the four spaces there for the valet service, and we take the car over to the rec center or the hardware store. In other words, the car that's parked in a hardware store that doesn't have all of its wheels. So it's been there for a long time. There's empty parking there. Um, if you go look, it's look in the back. <laughs> You may not want to park there, though. <laughs> it's a winter. It's true. Yeah, no, so, yeah, was, that's a fair point. So we'll leave that those spaces out. Anyway, valet parking for uh, either for residents or for local folks to take advantage of. It's it's a variation of the unused commercial space, but it's the parking space. And the last is um, there was a, the the mechanic street idea for food food trucks that was, but using the bridge for food. Uh, I don't know. You could put trucks on it, but but the times that we have rented out the bridge with picnic tables and had those dinners, the lunches, there take a with. table. Anyway, using the bridge as a location for food during peak season or peak weekends. Okay, um, I think we might. We've got six minutes left. We don't have to use it all. So Beth, you I'm, might be the last person. No, no, I'm not going to use it all. I'd be the last person. Okay, I wanted um, to say one that up until the pandemic the chamber for the last 20 years used the town crier board, which is now the town smiler. And we love the art on the town smiler, but that was used for information and it was updated every week. And we could use it for what's open for lunch. Everybody's activities were put on there. So I don't know if we could- I think in the, I, Beth, I think in the past it was just too busy. Well, but let's not put it, put it, put it down, put it. Right, we huh? could go back, we could yeah. build another one, maybe on, right. on, yeah. Um, the second is that we do have an information board at the Welcome Center. I don't know, maybe most people probably haven't been to the Welcome Center to see the board that rotates, that talks about inns and dining, et cetera. Um, and we've talked about doing one in the little window on the booth on the green. Um, so I'm going to throw that out as, you know, would need some funding, but that's a possibility that could be controlled, you know, 
Fantastic. Okay. Any any other things from EDC members? Any last comments? Todd? Um did we ever have a shuttle in this town? Yes. 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 Trolley. And why why did it why did it go away? Just because of lack of interest. No, no, okay. funding. Uh, oh, I mean, I mean, time, time, there weren't that many passengers in my contract. I'm sorry. Doing this to screw with me. Well, I'm sorry. I just, I just want to. My point. I just want to suggest a shuttle, but I didn't want to get yelled okay, at. We, but I we, realized we, I'm going to get yelled at either way. We have that idea. Yeah, that, that we already have the shuttle idea listed, right? Yeah, we yeah. do. It's I started the shuttle motion. All right. Thank you. Any other ideas? <laughs> um. I think just some yes. There, I know there are some community. We're just come closer to the mic, right? Oh, yeah. I was just going to say that the the community grants process is coming up soon, and a lot of these smaller items would be really great for local people to even put up a um, grant proposal and bring that in front of the board um, to get some of these items done. And I'm sure that a lot of these would be easy to pass through because they're really going to affect community. Say what? Everyone hear me? Greta, can you remind them of the date on that? Yeah, so the community grants uh, applications are due on December 15th. No, no, January. Uh, sorry, January 15th. Oh, 17th, maybe, yeah. They're not due until January? January 17th. January, I'm sorry. I think I was the one who told you a month earlier, Beth. Um, so January They breathe a little. Yeah, January 17th, and then we'll um, be reviewing them all later that month. Yeah. So, all right, so for this, yeah. So just, so we. Got three minutes. Yeah. So thank, first of all, I just want to thank everybody for, um, you know, for contributing to this. Uh, amazingly, I mean, we did at exactly seven o'clock by that clock, we started brainstorming, which was what the objective was. We got, I don't know, 40 ideas or something of that sort. Um, a lot of things I haven't, some, I mean, I'm sure we all have the same reaction. A lot of these ideas we've heard, but a lot of these ideas I haven't heard. So I think that was really valuable. Um, we're, this process, we need to figure out which of these ideas are affordable and feasible and important. And I don't know exactly what the framework is going to be. We'll use the survey results to help us in that way. We won't only rely on the surveys, right? I mean, we have a lot of people who, merchants in particular, who get feedback from people who come into their stores. That's valuable too. We have our own experiences. Remember, we're trying to solve for concerns of visitors, but also of residents. And residents are here and we all have experiences. So a combination of that input, the, the EDC will start, starting at our upcoming meeting next week, we'll start a prioritization process, we'll divide up, we'll ask for help from the community, we'll in, ultimately end up with proposals for funding, I think. I mean, all of these ideas, almost all of them will require some funding, some is minimal, some isn't. And we won't develop proposals for all, but eventually we will, I think this year, we'll have proposals in the three or four or five or six or seven ideas that we think are, are most important. And remember that, and it was just made very clear here, our priorities are, we have multiple priorities and all of those priorities are intertwined as economic and community development, housing and marketing and childcare and physical beauty downtown. We didn't talk a lot about events, but that's also really important. Those are our priorities. and. So we're going to have to balance those against these and some of them overlap and so forth. So I think, yeah, so we will, we're not, I think we've all decided that we're not going to ignore this issue of, yeah. of the impact of tourism. And there are still debates to be had. We tried to have, some of you tried to have them tonight. <laughs> um, and we will come to that point. It'll be sometime this year when those priorities will compete with each other. Those aren't small priorities. Um, we could spend all of our money on housing. We could spend all of our money on marketing, to be honest. We could spend all of our money on these ideas. Um, we could spend all of our money fixing up the green and making the town more beautiful. Those are all good things to do. What? So. So, so right and by the way we've used up our surplus so we're now operating which by the way the community wanted us to do if you remember when the edc was one first time. formed the main the main concerns one oh, the main concerns were that we weren't spending the money that we were getting we're now we've now spent the money we've got and we operate on an annual basis so 
we're going to have to make those choices. But before we get to that, we need to develop some of these ideas into actual solid proposals that we say, this is what we would do. This is why we think it's the right thing to do. This is what it would cost. How do we trade that off against more incentives for ADUs or a, a more aggressive or better technological marketing platform Thank or you. whatever? And so, I don't, you know, that's just going to be meeting by meeting and in the normal process, and it's all public. And then we'll seek out help and so forth. So, all right, uh, just Becky, last question or last question. Oh, sorry, can you just stand up there so the remote people can say it? I'm speaking of Becky Bertel with Stuck. Um, how was your income for the EDC this year opposed to last yeah. year? Was that we showed it? It was just about level. It's we don't have the numbers until for for restaurants. And well, the, the EDC revenue comes from restaurants, okay. lodging, and alcohol. Yeah, so you don't have a breakdown of that. Okay. Don't get a breakdown. Sorry. Thanks. Okay. Um, thank you all for staying at the end till the end. It's eight oh two. So I mean that that Nine really counts. Motion to adjourn. Joe said, "Is there a second? Second. second. Thank you. Any opposed? We are adjourned. I thank you, to everybody. Be on time, not two okay. minutes late. Thank you. She's on time. All right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you.